What's up, y'all? It's Ben's here with Breakthrough TV. We about to play some pong. First shot. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, you got one more shot. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, so okay. Two shots I get two, two, okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, man. So where are you from? How was it going up there? I'm from Compton, California. It's going up there like everybody else that's from Compton, you feel me? You go through the bullshit, you go through the cool shit. You want to gangbang, you don't want to gangbang. You want to sell, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The regular Compton shit. I ain't got no sad story to tell. <laughs> yeah, I How did it affect you as a person and an artist, though, like, you know, being from there? Uh, it affected me because all the music. Like, you know, the people, like, the community that I have around me still to this day. Like, my grandfather, when I was, like, six years old, he gave me, like, a harmonica. But that's what really, like, kicked me off into music because I used to ride around with him and his, his band, and he used to always play, like, James Brown and mm -hmm. Marvin Gaye, you know. Pop, all type of stuff. Yeah. And then my mom's, she always listened to rap music too. Like, that's her number one besides R&B. So I was always listening to NWA, Ice Cube. Like, I could rap that shit at like six, seven years old. When I really wasn't supposed to, I was listening to the CD. Right, yeah. So it had a huge influence on me, you know. It made me do music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. All right. Let's see. Oof. Okay, I got another one. Gucci, I got this one. Okay. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Almost. Alright, your turn, your turn. Let's see. Oh, goodness. Come on. Oh my god, bro. What's up with this rim shit, bro? <laughs> it's all good, bro. So you mentioned a few artists right there. Are there any artists that you were really inspired by growing up? Uh oh man, virtually. A lot of like, from, as far as R&B, like a lot, I listened to a lot of Michael Jackson when I was growing up. That was like my number one inspiration. So I always wanted to dance and sing like Mike, you know, watch the Jackson 5 movie over and over. Uh, but besides getting into in depth with rap, like as far as r and B, I I used to listen to uh, Danny Boy. A lot of people like know Danny Boy, but they don't know Danny Boy. He was on a couple records with Tupac back in the day. Uh, and then as I got older, you know, the little boy bands and shit like that, I was into that shit too. Like, I like listening to Omarion and, you know, but they really wasn't from my area, but still, Omarion from LA, you know what I'm saying? So, we didn't really have too much R&B coming out of Compton. I was really into the, had to get that elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as far as, like, that really influenced me, I mean, people that really came out of Compton, you know, the obvious artist, Easy, you know. Not necessarily Ice Cube, because he ain't really from Compton, but yeah. during that time, you With know, that group, though, yeah. that's what had me going. That's what wanted me, to, you know, to get into music. That's what opened up my eyes. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be doing that with this. Okay, cool. You think he got me with that? I thought I had that. Oh, my goodness. There you go. So I got to take this away? Yeah, so you put that cup to the side. All right. <laughs> We're going to set you Oh, you can put this on the side of the table. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. So man, let me see if they got me. Oh <laughs> let's go. go. You see that? Get that Kobe on. Oh. Alright, cool man. So you mentioned you got the harmonica and that's really what, you know, started making you want to go towards the music route. When was it though that you started to really take it serious? Uh, I I didn't take, yeah, I didn't take music serious till I hit high school, till I got to jazz choir and I linked up with one of my homies and he always used to walk around school. He was a pretty boy. He's walking around school singing and shit. So, me coming from Compton and going to another school in Downey, I, I didn't really like click with people there. So I found somebody that we had something in common, which was music. Cause mm -hmm. so I like to sing too, but I never was told that I I didn't know I had a voice until he told me. Okay. So he was like, "Yo, you need to go to jazz choir, nigga. You need to try it out, yada yada yada." I'm like, "Nigga, I don't, I don't do that shit, nigga. I want to like sock on somebody's head, like you know." So he's like, now nah, you gotta go. So I went, I tried out, it was like 100 people. Cause I'm at Downey High, so it was like 4,000 students there or something like that. So like 100, 200 people tried out, top 10, then I made it. I'm like, okay, cool, like they accepted me. But still then I didn't really take it serious because it was like, I'm a kid, you know, it was just like, it's choir. I just honestly didn't want to do no other bullshit class. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love music, so why not take a music class? Exactly. 
But if it wasn't for that class and the teacher that I had, the jazz choir teacher, like showing me like all the octaves and actually how to control my voice and where to sing from my head, my stomach, all types of areas of your body that you can literally grab your breath on yeah. you know I me mean? and get that motion. But let me click this back yeah. on. We Gucci. Yes, we Gucci audio, man. <laughs> but that's what really, you know, got me going in the, in the system for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, you got taught, like, actually not taught how to sing, or actually taught how to sing uh, through the jazz class then. Yeah, like, when I took know? jazz class, like, I had to pass the class. I had to, like, pass certain levels of singing. I had to know certain shit. I had yeah. to learn how to read music, you know? Like, yeah. I, it wasn't just, like, hopping in the studio and just feeling your all, which is which is fine too, but I had to actually learn how to, yeah, some some technicals and shit like that. I had to learn how to play the piano a little bit. I, I played the French horn, I played the, the snare drums, the bass drum, you know what I mean? I played a lot of instruments. No, so. fact, that's hard, but that's an experience that not a lot of people get to, uh, get, get, get to have. So it was a blessing, yeah. As much as I didn't really care for Donnie High, like that was one thing that I, I'm not gonna take away from yeah, that yeah. school, yeah. That's cool, bro. Yeah. Oh my good, look at that, that motherfucker's <laughs> Okay, okay. So I get those back. <laughs> I started out a little dry, I had to turn it up real quick. I ain't never been too good at games anyway. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> hey man, you got one. That's straight. Uh, so you recently dropped the project not too long ago. Mm -hmm. That was love too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how was uh, the process putting that together? And how is it compared to your previous projects? Uh, it was a process of me actually figuring out what I want to do because I already had music like I had about, I have about like three projects with the music already set, ready to go, but it was something that you know, because of the virus and setbacks and I wanted to distribute it with different people and, you know, different contracts and situations and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I can't just wait around. So I had to put out something. And then I realized that I never had put out a part two, like to anything. I never put out a part two song, nothing. So it just came across my mind, like, why not do a Thug Me Love part two? Because I listen to myself every day. I'm not going to lie. I wake up in the morning and I listen to me. Sometimes I might listen to some other shit, but I listen to my voice because I want to hear my influence. I want to hear my growth. I want to hear what I could have did better. What? So I'm listening to it, and I'm like, yo, this shit was dope. And it's one of my favorite um, projects that I have put together. So I'm like, why not do a part two? So it all made sense, you know, to do a part two is why not? It's two years later. It's around that little bit after the anniversary. But during the time, is the album, I mean, the EP made sense for me also because of you know, the things that not only I go through, but everybody in our community go through in our everyday lives. Like, you might not, when you listen you listen to the album or you listen to the EP, you listen to it, you're like, okay, this shit hard. But when you really listen to it, mm -hmm. like, you're gonna understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And you put that title into motion, you're gonna understand what I'm saying. Exactly. So, everybody wake up during their own time, man. Yeah. Exactly, cool. Shows, getting booked up, going out of state, promoting myself. I, I'm my own management now, so I do everything that I want to do. Yeah. Basically, is getting my name more out there, mm -hmm. dropping more projects, more videos, staying consistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. I mean, there's people out here that's putting out music, and it's great, but um, I'm putting out content that's going to last forever. You know, you can listen to my shit like 10, 20 years from now and you're going to understand what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of shit that's out right now is just like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. It's going to be here and go. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, it's 
it's a lot to work on, but it's also that I, I, I have a lot of things that I want to do outside of music for our communities also that that's, that's going to transpire between the both. Yeah. So it's a lot to work on, but we got albums, you know, concerts, not concerts, but performances. I'm going to be at all of these performances. I'm already, I'm booked for like the end of this month and the beginning of July or no, but yeah, beginning of July. And then in August, no, July I also have like a tiny desk type of concert thing. Yeah. So I'm like putting that together, but it's dope, bro. Like I'm just That's waiting. Cool. A lot of content coming out. Man. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be heavy. Uh, it's exciting. It's gonna be traffic, man. Oh. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Okay. Gotta get the second one. Oh. You should have just slipped that back in there for me. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about COVID and all that. Did that hold you back at all, music-wise? Or did, was it better for you? I know some people said that they were able to lock in a lot more, but some people did hold back a little bit. I mean, it was like the same for me, I'm gonna be honest, like nothing really changed for me, to yeah. be honest. I mean, for the first kind of like couple months, it was hard to get to an actual studio because everybody was kind of like, oh, do you, mm-hmm. should we go to the studio or should we not? Like, should you have people come in mass? You know, yeah. like, I already didn't care, to be honest, I, as long as, you know, I was safe, like that's all I really cared about. But it really wasn't like a big deal for me to like drop. I already had music loaded up. So yeah, regardless yeah. if I didn't go to the studio, I was gonna drop something. Exactly. But it wasn't really a big of a deal. I think the only thing that I had setbacks personally was actually shows because mm-hmm. the venues and stuff like that were closed. So yeah. a lot of people weren't able to do as many shows as we had did the previous years before. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it didn't really affect me like that. I was still in the studio like, twice okay. three four times a week whatever i can like i'm i'm there yeah. and you know it came to the extent where i'm like even if it, i can't get into the studio i was planning to buy my own mm-hmm. situation at my house so i could be able to record when i wanted to record and you know so it really didn't it, it didn't have no setbacks not for me personally but i can understand the other artists is, you know some people are just now starting some people have been in the game and they got contracts yeah. now this is closed and you know they're trying to figure out what they want to do like Exactly. I don't, I don't have that problem. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so let me change it up real quick. You put two in the back. Right? Two in the back. Yeah, so kind of like that. Oh, we could change like it up? Straight. Yeah, you can change it up. <laughs> yeah, <probably not>. Jeez. <laughs> Only thing y'all gotta get, somebody to get the ball. <laughs> you got all that. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I ain't never been to game. Um, are there any artists locally that you really fuck with and vibe with? Uh, to be honest, I try, you know, here and there, but it's you know it's a lot of politics mm-hmm. in LA as we speak. So I try. I reach out personally to people like, you know, Kaylin. You know, I haven't. I, I would like to work with other artists. Like I reached out to Wally the Sensei. We supposed to be, we were supposed to do something together. Yeah. You know, hopefully that'll come through. Yeah, Asia. I would hope to do something with, you know what I mean? And, you know, further on to Roddy Rich and YG, like, yeah. I haven't really been in contact with them type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. YG, I met YG, but I haven't had a sit down, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I support everybody, it mm-hmm. don't matter to me yeah. where you're from, it's about who you are. Exactly. So, and if you're putting out some good music, like, I'm a rock with it regardless. Yeah. If I like it, I like it, it yeah. don't really matter to me. So, I be trying to reach out, but you know, it's a lot of, Hearsay, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? It'd yeah, be a lot of usual business. So, you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> That's cool. Well, uh, hopefully, you can get a lot more of those features that you mentioned. So that'd be yeah. fine. I think you and Wally would be crazy. Yeah, they'll happen. I had hopped on this because I think somebody linked me with him probably like a year ago. I forget who it was, but. I looked at him, I was like, yo, I like his music, right? Yeah, He's from yeah, the same yeah. city. So I'm like, That's dope. So then he was live one day. He was live one day, and then. Um, I hopped on this line and I was like, yo, nigga, like, what's up? Can we get a feature? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like that type. I ain't yeah. going, I ain't going hide. If I want something from you, be like, yeah, let me get a feature. You yeah, know, yeah. I don't care how many followers you got. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So, but hopefully they'll come through. I should hit him up and see what's, see what's yeah, popping with that. Yeah. I would love to hear that. Oh, okay. yeah. Losing the game.
You want to change it up? Or you want to leave it like that? Should we just bring them closer somehow? So yeah. Square? Yeah, that's cool. This. Okay. <laughs> I can't never get that too. Yeah. I'm a win though. Watch. Are you gonna come back? <laughs> yep. All right. Let's go. Um. So, what are some previous features that? Because you just said, you know, you, you do like to reach out a lot. You mentioned some people that you do want to work with. Who are some people that you worked with in the past and that you love to work with? Uh, Ocho, because he got good energy. Even though I had, had something done and I sent it to him, we wasn't physically in the studio together, but I, I mean, I've been in Scenic all the time. So, yeah. But his energy, you feel me, on the record is like natural. It don't feel forced to yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? So him. Swift, obviously, I always down to work with Swift. I see bro like everywhere. Yeah, nigga yeah. live around the corner, basically. Yeah, so, yeah. and Rob too. You know, there's other artists that I've done features with. That's fun to be in the studio with. That I know we gonna make a hit. Yeah, there's uh, a vibe there, right? Yeah, Sambo, my boy Sambo from Get Rich. Uh, he got a record I did with him and Go Get a KB. And this other dude, I forget his name, but he hard though. I forget his name, but he hard though, man. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I like doing records. It's like I don't mind features. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah. just I already know. And to me, nigga, you could have one follower. Like I really don't yeah. care. If you are to me, I, I'll do the feature. It's about the music, right? Yeah, I've done a feature for free plenty of times. Yeah. Like, but at the same time, depending on the situation, I'm gonna get the bucks. Yeah, exactly. So, it just depends. All right, you wanna line those up? Or? Yeah, I got you. Which way? This straight up. Right oh, here. Yeah? Right there. Perfect. All right, let's put this one away. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Like, that's because I'm weak, bro. I'll tell you, I don't play games, but I'm going to beat nah, you today. Nah, you oh, okay. I told you I'm going to come back. You're going to come back. Oh, oh I was that same you one. What's that trick, shots? Y'all talking about again? So, let's say you miss it, it bounces off, it rolls back to you. Oh, okay. And then figure out you can do a trick shot. Alright, so I think we're just gonna try to close this game out. Okay. Try to get competitive. <laughs> he moves that to the left a little bit. Come on. Yeah, because now it's a tie game. Alright. So you pulled it off. Ha! <laughs> oh! I should have stayed right there. Damn. Watch me now. Oh! Hey.